JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to GFD Traders Espresso with me, Darusul and Charles, because today's the 11th of March, 2022. So we have welcome everyone. Welcome to this recorded session uh, for Friday. Um, so yep, I hope you're all doing uh, well. As always, uh, we're gonna have a quick look at the markets, you know, a few of the charts, the usual stuff, basically just to see what's, what's happening. Um, but before we go ahead with that, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, um, quick um, mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page, which is also updated on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So. Um, now then guys, jumping into the charts, so the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225, and as you can see this uh, 25,775 territory did a good job. And uh, yep, um, it held uh, the you know the up move here, um, it acted as a very nice area of resistance this time. So yeah, uh, for now what I can say here is that um, everything's kind of working out here, I would say. Yes, in general, the whole kind of sentiment is to the downside still. I mean, it's still, um, it's still a uh, risk-off environment right now. Um, yesterday, the U.S. equities did drift to the downside a little bit. Um, then today, Nikkei, yep, kind of followed suit here and moved lower. However, it didn't really drop, let's say, all the way towards the towards its uh, the low that it reached this week on on Wednesday uh, at 24,681.82 zone approximately around there but again um, it managed to remain above the psychological 25,000 mark because today it, it did drop briefly below that mark uh, which you can see here um, so it fell below that uh, 25,000 territory the psychological 25,000 territory but as you can see it kind of managed to remain above it so that could be seen slightly as a good indication um, if we look at the week if we look at the weekly chart here you can see that the week ended uh, still above that 208 EMA. It did test it uh, this week. It did drop slightly below it here. I'm talking about the 200 day, uh, 200 EMA here on the weekly chart. Um, it tested that area, yep, that line, and then rebounded and pushed back to the upside and, and remained above it. So, in other words, uh, for now, um, I would say if you're looking for um, some further downside, I mean, you won't, be, you wouldn't be wrong there. However, just to be a little bit more on the safe side, I would rather wait for a drop below, uh, below this week's low. Um, which is roughly around that 24,681 zone. And then, yeah, we could go slowly uh, further to the downside. If you're looking for something for the upside, guys, well, at least wait for a break of this downside line right here, taken from the high of the 5th of January, although I understand that it's a bit on the um, on the tentative side, but um, nevertheless, uh, let's see if, we, if it can somehow, you know, uh, play its role. Uh, Shanghai Composite, very quickly on down, one beautiful recovery here and uh, yep and while I am talking and uh, recording this video um, the index is pushing back into the positive territory so 
as you can see here, um, it's now like kind of, you know, like I said, getting back into positive zone. And in a way, this idea that I talked about here uh, is kind of working out. So what I said before that if this 3202 zone or 3200 zone can uh, acts as a good area of support, a nice rebound here could be possible. So uh, we kind of got that. I'm not saying that this is an ideal uh, kind of, you know, picture of that what I was talking about because in a way I was hoping maybe to see a better a better test of this area but in general I mean it drifted lower it tested the um, this hurdle here the the high of the, uh, the highest point of March of 2020 and uh, then rebounded from that and pushed back to the upside however what's more interesting here is that um, when I previously talked about Shanghai Composite I talked about this range here this wide range where the index is currently uh, sitting in so if um, if you're looking for um, if you're looking for some upside then it's gonna be quite interesting to see if we can actually climb back and stay um, maybe somewhere above this lower side of this range the previous range that we got you know that got broken and if it somehow does that guys I mean well this is where it's gonna be very very interesting for a few more buyers and uh, yeah let's keep an eye on this one let's see how this is gonna play out but um, yeah um, it's it's quite an, an interesting mode move here um, I would say if it holds if this area somehow does its job as a resistance area now of course we could see maybe a bit of a retracement so I would say um, the arrow probably would be a little bit more accurate if I would draw it somehow this way so if the barrier continues to hold, um, then yes, another slide could be possible. And uh, if it, if the you know if the composite here, China composite, uh, the Shanghai composite jumps back above this area, then I'll consider maybe a bit of a uh, retracement here to the upside. And the reason why I'm saying retracement is because we are still below this downside resistance line taken from the high, the 13th of December. Now jumping into Hong Kong's Hang Seng index, yep, um, still still in negative territory. However. However, however, this hurdle here, this 20,102 zone, is doing its job and providing good support. Although, yes, we fractionally did drop below it today. Um, but, um, yep, uh, still, still, um, this area kind of is doing its job. I mean, this is not the lowest point of uh, this week, of course. We, the lowest point of this week so far is the today's low um but what i can say here is that for now i mean i'm, I'm keeping an eye on this one to, maybe next week i'll i'll put this one you know i'll move i'll shift this one here but in general the fact that it's still staying above this uh wednesday's uh, low then yes that kind of gives a bit of hope here for the for the buyers that said um in order for me let's say to get comfortable with the upside i would rather wait for a break of this downside line and a push Mm, above this hurdle here, this 21,327 zone, and then yeah, we could go for some uh, for some upside. Uh, for the downside, I need to see, like I said, a drop, and I, and I would like to see the daily candle staying below this, or the body of the daily candle staying below this hurdle, and then yeah, we could go for some lower levels again. Uh, the German index, DAX. So, um, yeah, it's um, quite interesting. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It's quite interesting and everything's kind of working out nicely. So what I talked about yesterday, guys, I said, keep your eyes on this downside line because in a way we I said what well, we could see maybe a bit of a push higher, but if it, at the end of the day it drifts back down and stays below this downside line, well, maybe not everything is like uh, nice and dandy here on the, uh, you know, in, in DAX. Um, at the moment, I am very careful because the cash index is sitting around at around 13,428 zone right now, or I would say maybe 30, so 14, uh, 13,430 zone. Um, so slightly below where um, it closed uh, yesterday, but still above this line here, this, uh, this um, 38.2%. Uh, percent retracement on the Fibonacci. So, I mean, I'm keeping an eye on that one still, but um, overall, because I'm looking at this overall. So, and in general, I'm looking at this level right here, this uh, 13,310 area, 11 approximately around there. If the index falls below it, I'll start aiming to the downside again. If it remains above this area, I mean, this is where... Um, 
uh, this is where the tricky bit co could come in. Um, now, in terms of the upside, I would probably would prefer to see a push above the, I think this is the current highest point of this week. I think, let me just quickly um, double check this very quickly. Just bear with me one moment. So yeah, I believe so. Yeah, that's going to be the case. So this is the current highest point of this week, near the 13,844. 48 zone or we can round it up towards the 50 so 13,850 zone so mm, that's the current kind of area uh, the current highest point uh, the, not, the current highest area um, of this week so if we do clear that then yes we could potentially go for some higher levels and maybe you know initially I'll aim for that territory around that 14,400 zone um, at the moment um, it's the kind of a waiting game here and uh, of course a lot will depend on the um depend on the situation in you know the geopolitical situation um, and in general how you know central banks are going to be coping with inflation um, so yesterday we had the ECB coming out so yeah they're the, the forecast that you know there will be higher inflation uh, of course logical um, but um, yeah for now for now um, let's see like I said like I said let's go slowly on this I mean we let's not rush into anything yes for some uh, this is presenting a nice opportunity kind of you know to step in um, one thing uh, for sure of course um, the times are difficult and uh, um, here for example with uh, with, uh, with the German index um, with the German index here, it's also a little bit unclear. You know, on one hand, uh, we do have an index which is kind of suffering right now with, uh, due to all these uh, tensions, um, because of course we understand that the German economy is, is quite um, uh, quite related to um, to the Russian economy. So you know that's why there is a bit of a, a problem here. So certain certain companies then yes, of course. Uh, are kind of you know had their businesses in in Russia um, so now when you know the during these times yes I mean everything kind of you know got kind of got screwed up a little bit so so yeah um, at the moment I would say um, keep your eyes on the headlines because it's very difficult yes on one hand we can you know continue kind of you know talking about some of some of the levels and in a way the some of these levels are just kind of you know helping you out a little bit in this point at this point so it's just kind of you know giving me giving you some sort of a, a reference point however um, it might you know it might do do what I'm what I'm saying is going to do but then straight away let's say boom after five, five minutes there's another headline that's coming out and uh, you know it just kind of messes up uh, the whole kind of scenario the whole um, idea and uh, this is where I always say have your stop loss in place guys just in case it goes you know suddenly reverses uh, sharply against you um, now jumping into the uh, euro stocks 50s just a quick update as well so I talked about this one and uh, yeah it's still it's still holding to this downside line so in a way not much has changed here so um, yeah we are we're kind of uh, keeping an eye on the steep downside line and uh, if you're looking for uh, maybe an opportunity to go lower I would say this inside swing high of which is re near that 3600 zone so a drop below this may may open the door towards the current lowest point uh point of this week near the 3387 zone so yeah keep that in mind uh the s p 500 so yesterday the u.s uh indices did did not perform well um, they closed in the red however not a significant loss and in general looking at this picture here on an S&P overall you can see yes there is a problem we are declining uh, we are trading below all of the EMAs here on our daily chart as well so this could be seen as a bearish indication um, yesterday, for example, if we take a look at you know the the best and the worst performing sectors in the U.S., uh, the best performing for performing sector was energy, um, and the worst performer sector performing sector was technology. So uh, it kind of swapped uh, places, you know, on Thursday. Uh, sorry, on on 
Wednesday, sorry, on Wednesday was a little bit different. So let's see how this is going to play out today, guys. I mean, this is quite, this is quite interesting how they uh, jump around. But um, yeah, in terms of best performing sectors, energy, basic materials, and utilities, those were like in that order. Uh, those were the ones um, on the positive side. And in the on the negative side, the technology, communication services, and consumer defensive. So... Mm, so yeah, you can see by the heat map here, um, the companies that, you know, did well yesterday, um, but, um, yeah, um, energy, energy was, like I said, was the, you know, perf the best performer, you can see here in the Ex Exxon Mobil, the your, your Exxon Mobils, your Chevrons, um, those were, you know, uh, the ones uh, that, did good. Of course, oil uh, managed to recover somewhat and push back to the upside. Um, and uh, yeah, technology is kind of suffering right now. It's kind of, um, let's say, it is attractive. However, um, we need to kind of probably wait on this one a little bit to see what, how everything is going to shape up. But certainly, don't get me wrong, certain uh, stocks do present themselves with nice opportunities right now. Mm, but they might even present themselves with more opportunities later on once, let's say, the geopolitical tensions kind of ease out a little bit and, uh, you know, calm down. So, um, so yeah, for now, um, I would say be very careful if you are trading stocks, guys. I mean, stocks are a good place to be in uh, as right now as well. And certain st certain um, industries, certain sectors, um, not all of them, of course, but, um, yeah. Also, if you are shorting some stock, if you have the opportun opportunity to short, then yes, like I said, stocks are actually quite um, an interesting field uh, to be in. But that's already another topic. Um, so coming back to this, so S&P 500 coming back to some of these levels. And this is where I'm going to adjust a few lines here. So first of all, I'm going to mark this lowest point of this week near the 4,157.58 zone. A nice drop below this may open the door towards some... Mm, Thomas, some lower levels uh, for the um, for the upside. Um, now, again, uh, I would say stick to this downside line for now, uh, because the break of this downside line could also push the um, index above the 21-day EMA, and potentially more buyers could join in. Uh, DXY, the dollar index. So. A nice good rebound from this area. I talked about this, guys, and boom, there we go. So I highlighted this area in, in, you know, this week, and I said that we might see maybe a corrective move, and if we do get a corrective move, keep your eyes on this hurdle. And uh, we got that rebound here. So now the big question here is, can we travel back all the way towards the upside here and uh, maybe clear this 99.42 zone? So... To be honest, at this point, I, uh, while we're going to be sitting in this area right here where I'm circling it, then um, I will remain on the neutral side just because, again, I don't like these scenarios. I don't like these patterns. So uh, this is not something, you know, although I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside, yes, but this is, like I said, for me to get a little bit more careful and cautious, I would prefer to wait for a push above the current highest point of this week near the uh, 94, 97, oh, sorry, 99.42 level. And then I'll aim for that uh, psychological 100 level. For the downside, I would need to see a drop below this 97.44 zone right here. And then, yep, we could go uh, for a, a larger correction to the downside. Um, gold. Gold is undecided for now. I would do because it did have a good rally in the beginning of this week. I mean, we've reached that, almost reached that 2075 level, the one that I have here as the all-time high. Mm. But uh, as you can see, we yeah we reached the area near the 20, uh, 2070 zone and we drifted back down. So what can we do now is to continue monitoring this situation here with, uh, of course, with, with the whole kind of geopolitical, with all the, these geopolitical tensions. And of course, if, if these uh, continue to escalate to the worst side, then, yeah, I mean, we could see gold picking up as well, actually, and maybe DXY as well is starting to accelerate. So, so yeah, uh, keep your eyes on that. And uh, go at the moment, gold did correct nicely. Uh, we are, you know, resting near this uh, this kind of 1974 territory or above that. Um, can we see a rebound? Well, for now, we're just waiting for this one and uh, waiting to see. For now, I'm kind of leaning, like I said, still I'm kind of cautiously bullish on this. 
because for me to get you know excited with the downs and I've mentioned this one in my previous videos this week that a drop below this 1950 level would be needed and as if you remember I said that this uh, commodity might kind of you know move sideways here a little bit um, and then yeah we could see maybe a break of this upside line and then and then you know so on and so on that's in terms of the downside but if in terms of the upside if this uh, this area continues to somehow hold well, maybe a nice pickup here by the bulls could be possible. Um, WTI oil, um, yep, declined, and it, this is very, very interesting. And I said to you yesterday, guys, um, and I from the beginning of this week, I kept on saying, keep your eyes on this monthly chart and this 115 zone. Look at this. I mean, we had a significant drop here. My question is now, um, will we see a um, a good kind of, you know, a rebound here back to the upside? Um, and let's say again, I, as I, I also mentioned this in the, be in the beginning of this month, uh, the, sorry, in the beginning of this week, that, um, yeah, we might see a corrective move lower, but... Um, the month is not finished. The month we're only through kind of one third of the month, so we still have you know days to go here. And uh, well, this could easily reverse back back to the upside, maybe going into you know like next week. So if we look at the weekly chart right now, you can see that yes, we're getting that correction. The weekly um, chart shows that yes, we are in the negative zone right now. We have you know uh, we're kind of we're negative for the week. However, today let's see how everything is going to play out because. As you can see, this 115 zone is actually kind of near the kind of the you know the 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 point where it opened here, the opening point. So let's see if this is not going to end up traveling back up. And then you know, for example, we might see maybe somewhat of a doji here from the, on the weekly chart from the technical side, of course. Um, and then yeah, the next week would be an interesting one as well because then maybe we could see some uh, a bigger and stronger move in either direction. But again. For now, the way we can play this one out and jumping back into the daily chart oil here, I'm keeping an eye on this 21 day EMA. I want to see if this is going to get tested or not, if it provides good support as it did here back in the uh, mid February, end of February. Yes, beautiful rebound here could be possible. And this uh, 20, my 21 day EMA is roughly around 102.78 zone right there. So keep that in mind. Uh, Ethereum very quickly on that. Um, so yeah, stronger dollar is not really helping here in the crypto world. Um, and we're seeing a bit of a decline. So uh, we had a good test of this 21 day EMA. So that's good news. Um, you know, we did, it did provide strong resistance, this 21 day EMA, and we drifted back down. Now, um, in a way, in terms of further declines here, I, I would still need to see a drop below this 2478 zone right here, just to be a little bit more sa on a safe side. And uh, another issue with that uh, idea is, of course, this short term tentative upside line, there we go right there. So in other words, you could say that, you know, the currently the the, the crypto is coiling up. So if you do prefer this idea here, you can for sure stick to it because I mean, that's going to be a little bit more, let's say on the safe side. So if you're looking for, you know, a clear, uh, clear move here, maybe yeah, wait for a break out, a breakout of this wait for a breakout of the um, of one of the sides here of this uh, this this triangle and then yeah with the next uh, this could lead to a next short term directional move uh, jumping into a few pairs very quickly guys now AUD USD so just a quick update so there we go boom then we traveling back above this uh, 200 EMA we're traveling back above this downside line here and to be honest I can probably get rid of this downside line um, because it got violated a few times so no longer that it carries as much significance. Now what I'm going to stick to is this downside line right here, taken from the high of the 25th of February of 2021. Um, we're also above this 200-day EMA as well. So yeah, everything's kind of um, everything's kind of interesting. I would say on one hand we do have a pair which is sitting currently above all of its EMAs. On the other hand, we do have this downside line which is still kind of you know is providing good resistance. So um, let's see if we're not going to end up having somewhat of a you know of a, um, kind of a 
of of if, if it's the same scenario sorry stalled there a little bit um the same scenarios for, for example right here where you know like we had a jump above this um, above the 200 day ema we we continue to trade above some of these uh you know above these emas here for quite a while but um eventually yeah it did uh, it did drop back down so that's what i'm saying so yes if the bull the bulls should not get their hopes up yet uh because again we are yes we are trading above the um, above the uh, all the emas here on our daily chart but uh to be honest um oh, okay, well, it's not doing anything there we go but to be honest um like i said we do have this downside line which could still be in in you know in the way uh nzd uh, cad quick update i've talked a lot about this and i said that maybe just maybe this could be forming a possible bullish flag for now it seems to be like that so um however we cannot really get excited about with the upside and un unless until we get that pop above the 80 0 0.8775 zone right here and then yes we could go for some higher levels so yeah, for now we're just observing this one. Um, let's see how far this, how 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 long this kind of um, you know uh, air and this uh, consolidation will be happening here. Um, like I said, it seems to be forming a possible bullish flag. So can we um, can we get that? We'll just have to wait and see. When with the with the downside, it's also a little bit unclear. So I mean, uh, for me. I would probably need to see a break of this of this upside line and then kind of consider you know lower levels but at the moment I'm just observing this one and uh, yeah it, it is quite interesting uh, especially on the upside but a confirmation break is needed. Uh, USD JPY boom we've managed to clear that level we're currently clearing that 116.35 zone and uh, yeah that's that's where it's you know it's continuing to rally my only concern here is for today is that we are having this uh, you know breakout quite early mm, and uh, let's see yeah let's see how this is gonna play out because if if we're not gonna end up you know just drifting back down uh by the end of the day here and staying below this hurdle and basically then we'll just get ourselves a false breakout so that could happen as well don't rush into anything guys yet if the indices start declining then well yen buying could resume um, but this is a, again a difficult question here would be which one will outpull which because uh, dxy would also start you know rising as a, as a safe haven so which uh, of the two would be seen as a better safe haven the US dollar or the Japanese yen that's like I said and this is right now what we're seeing that's why we're not seeing huge swings here on, on USD JPY it's because um, like I said both of those uh, currencies are acting as good safe haven so um, so yeah I mean at the moment you can see that the dollar is kind of winning a little bit but will that be for long i mean we'll see we'll have to wait and see guys uh for now if we just take purely what we see on the chart right now yes everything is looking quite nice if it stays above that 116.35 level yes i'll go for some higher levels um my next target here and probably this is where i need to kind of zoom out here a little bit go back into history because look at where we are i mean we are at little areas where you know we've last time been around when when was that january 2017 guys so um now let's aim for the i think it's going to be the highest point of january or will it be december yeah december um i think there we go let me just uh mark this quickly up oh, there we go so the highest point of december also is near the highest point of january of 2017 that's roughly around that 118.66 that's going to be my next target if we remain above that 116.35 level uh gbp aussie so of course in about three minutes we'll we're going to be getting the uh, uk gdp numbers that's going to be quite interesting so that's why i have you know a few pairs here so um in general just to quickly pick up on gbp aussie here um yeah i mean beautiful beautiful you know move back to the downside in a way this idea worked out i mean part um, i would say it worked out i would say maybe something like 75 percent of it because the idea was maybe to, to see a test of this highlighted territory which was quite a key area of support previously mm, maybe the now i was i was hoping to see it maybe as a good area of resistance but uh it didn't really quite reach it um instead we reached some some of these other levels for example uh we reached the area here the high of the 4th of may of two 2021 um or actually i think it's i think there was the high of um april the high of the 
21st of April 2021, um, near the 1.8075, something like that. And uh, yeah, um, we drifted back to the downside. So um, in a way, I would say, like I said, yeah, it did work out <laughs> probably somewhere like around, around 75% here. So I will take that. Um, it's not always ideal, guys. I mean, it doesn't always test, you know, the <laughs> levels ideally. But for now, um, yep, it's quite interesting to see what's going to happen further. And uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment, I would say if uh, this idea is, I would say, is already accomplished. We can we get a further move lower? Well, let's wait and see because at the moment I'm keeping an eye on that 1.7741 zone. Um, after that, uh, the next target here could be, of course, somewhere around here, maybe near the 1.7427. So yeah, that's quite a could be quite a decent decline. But let's not rush into anything yet, guys. I mean, we do have another area, potential area of support right here near the 1.7580. That's what's going to be my next target if we do and drop and stay below that 1.7741 zone. Uh, GBPNZD, similar story. I mean, after if you remember a while ago, I talked about this one. And uh, uh, back in February, I mean, I talked about this one. And I said, like, look at this triangle pattern here. Uh, wait for a clear breakout through it and then yeah we could maybe aim for the next directional move so so yeah we got that breakout here and look what happened i mean we almost made it our way towards this lowest point of november of 2021 and to be honest that's what i'm going to be aiming here for um i'll but for that i would need to see a drop below yesterday's low first which is roughly around that 1.9047 zone if we get a drop below that then this will confirm a forthcoming lower low and could make the pair go closer to this area that said um, as we know, a lot of people are watching this and a lot of people are kind of aiming for that area. So don't get surprised, for example, if we do go lower a little bit, but we don't reach that this this lowest point of November and then we kind of maybe test, let's say, for example, somewhere around here, this psychological 190 zone, somewhere around there, and, or maybe a little bit lower below that, like, for example, this 1.8973 and then rebound and push back to the upside. So in other words, we're the current amplitude amplitude of you know of this oscillating around the uh the 200 day ema that's quite big and uh yeah let's like i said it may eventually come back to this 200 day ema um but again we're, we're still struggling to find a good um a good floor for that so yeah keep that in mind guys um i can see that yes there, there should have been data right now in terms of uk uh numbers uh but so far, yes, nothing is coming out yet. So um, kind of we're still waiting for that. Um, but let me just jump into um, let me just jump into another instrument here, GBP USD, very quickly on that one. So yeah, um, at the moment I would say yes. I mean it's also quite interesting. It's drifting lower overall. I mean we are still trading below. Uh, this hurdle, this lowest point of December, although don't get me wrong, we did violate it uh, here. We did violate this um, this barrier here and we kind of traveled higher, but I said that keep your eyes on the steep downside line, which could, you know, play out uh, nicely here and, um, you know, could still be the one to watch. So, in other words, um, for now, for now, um, let's continue monitoring this. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find information on GBP data here, but unfortunately, aha, uh -huh, okay, so GBP, so it's coming out right now. I think yes, there we go. Industrial production came out 2.3 better than the forecast. I, I can see that there is information coming out on GDP month, month on, so GDP month on month, uh, UK's GDP mm, month on month January came out much better, the plus 0.8 percent. The forecast was at minus 0 0.02. Um, GDP year on year came out at 10 percent uh, when the expectation was for six. So yeah, a bit of nice data here. Um, in general, yes, overall um, good data. So maybe a bit of a uh, you know, a pickup here on GBP could be possible. However, again, uh, let's say if we're taking GBP USD here, be very careful for now. I mean, this is this is going to be highly dependent on 
um highly dependent on the um on this uh, on this on the, on the US dollar so yeah i mean it's not really um it's not really like i said yes the data did came and it came out positive but will it have enough uh strength to just kind of push you know this uh this pair uh kind of you know to the upside again that will we'll just have to wait and see for that one because i, I don't think so i think a lot of it will depend on the you know us dollar right now so be very careful with that and i would say if you're you know if we're looking at some downside well keep your eyes on the current lowest point of this week near the 1.3070 that's the current lowest point of this week a drop below this yep would confirm a forthcoming lower low a quick update on euro chef very quickly on that one so it was quite interesting and I haven't picked up on this one for quite a while. So let me just adjust a few lines here. So this is what we did this week. We managed to reach parity. Um, so we Euro again with the Swiss franc managed to at one point this week managed to hit kind of one to one, uh, you know, a ratio. And uh, yeah, now what we're seeing here is uh, we had a rebound from that zone from that territory and we pushed back to the upside we climbed back to this 21 day EMA uh, we tested this 1.03 territory I, I, I this is quite an important one level that I'm watching this is the lowest point of January and uh, if we do clear this level if we do pop above this 21 day EMA and this level here the 1.03 level then yes that's where it could become a little bit more interesting for a few more buyers however let me just adjust this trend line uh, um, because we need to be very careful because this is what we are watching. So um, if it also, if it, like I said, if it breaks that 1.03 level, great. We could go for some higher levels. But um, at the moment, guys, I mean, we're still below this. So this could still play out well for these sellers. And finally, your USD 1.10 level, uh, psychological 110 zone is kind of doing its job. So yesterday we did see a move higher uh, we did see a push north here yesterday um, the ECB interest rate came out um, and yeah that remained the same yesterday then we were watching the um, Christine Lagarde's uh, press conference uh, didn't really help the euro here as you can see and also DXY managed to accelerate a little bit so all this combination pushed the pair uh, back down and fell it fell back below this um, this kind of this 1.10 territory and I would say this way that if it continues to trade below that, I'll aim for lower levels. If it pump, pumps higher here, then yep, great. But I would need to see a break of this downside line taken from the high of the 10th of February 1st. And then, yes, more buyers could join in. So keep that in mind. So, guys, that's it for this session and for this week. I hope you found it useful. And thank you very much for watching and listening. Thank you very much for kind of, you know, staying with me this whole week. I really appreciate you. I, I, well, I really appreciate you guys for doing that. So, yes, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, next week, uh, it, I should be able to run these videos live. So, hopefully, like I said, that will be a little bit more a little bit better uh but yeah for now guys i hope you have a fantastic weekend and first of all of course have a fantastic trading day today don't over trade it's friday and uh yeah have your stop losses in place but um yeah as most importantly enjoy your weekend at least try to relax as much as you can you know and then come back fresh on monday thank you very much guys and bye-bye